everybody it's Claire here from Sewn by Claire and today I thought it was time for a little update video because I've been a bit quiet and a little bit busy around and about but I thought that none of you actually knew what I'd been up to so I thought that we'd have a bit of a check-in so first of all how are you all doing hopefully you're doing well hopefully you've had some lovely weather wherever in the world you live I know the UK has had some lovely sunshine so um, I don't feel quite so guilty telling you that it's really quite warm here we've got 30 degrees at the moment um, and that's really quite warm. I think it's up to about 33 um, later in the week. So I shall be hiding in my sewing room. Um, I do like the sun, I must say, but um, it just gets so humid and sticky um, that it's just nice sometimes just to have somewhere to retreat to. Um, and I, I make the most of my time then. So I, I hope I hope that things are going okay with you. First things first as well, well after I've asked how you are all doing and, and, and let me know what's happening with you, because I always like to hear. Um, is that my mum is doing very well after her knee replacement operation. So she had her right leg replaced back at the end, very, very end of May, about the 24th, I think. Um, and she's doing remarkably well. It was it, it was funny because I flew over, no, so she had her up on the 22nd. So I made sure she'd had her up before I flew over um, because I didn't really want to be going over if, if, if she was all fit and healthy because I could obviously use, use that flight time another time. Um, and um, it was quite funny because I went to, in to visit her with my sister, Elizabeth, who's just one year and two days younger than me. So our birthdays are two days apart. And um, she, um, mum was just holding court in the, in the ward. I don't know whether the drugs were making her high or whether she was just feeling on top of the world or relieved it was all over. I'm not quite sure sure what was going on, but she'd, um, she'd taken a very, quite a nice sort of um, fabric, uh, lightweight caftan, quite bright colors, which really suit her. Um, and so she was, she was at this vision in this caftan in the middle of the, the um, communal ward. Uh, I think there were four of the patients in with her, so it was about five. Uh, and just holding court, she was up on a Zimmer frame, she was wandering around, this is two days post-op, um, hobbling around and telling us everybody's name, um, telling us all, you know, what she'd found out about her background and, and she said, oh, they're all so worried about getting up and walking around. She said, they all think they're going to fall over. She said, so I'm up and about just showing them that they can just get on with it and everything's fine. So. I did try to speak to her and just say, well, you are supposed to be mending and healing and recovering after your operation, but you can't keep a good woman down. And, and to be fair, you know, she, um, she left having made friends with everybody on her ward. And, and as she left, they also sort of gave her a wave and a cheer and, um, and said how lovely it had been to spend time with her. So I suppose that's a good accolade really, isn't it? Even though I was tearing my hair out because I wanted it to be nice and calm, nice and relaxed sort of thing. And I know you've got to be up and about and, and, and get moving, um, but I think I just wanted her to, to relax a bit more and just let a little bit more healing um, go on. And I think she's paid for that a little bit because the wound just took a little bit longer than most to heal up and so she's had to have that covered and the staples had to stay in a little bit longer. Um, but they're all out now. So um, as I say, we're just over, we're just a month, aren't we really? Just over. Um, I stayed with her for 10 days. So um, I had 10 days in the UK looking after her. So that was a bit of a challenge as well because obviously she's, she's seriously independent. And, and that's great that's what we want but it's just when you're wanting you, you, you've gone over in carer mode and you're I'm wanting to be be there doing things for her and, and she, she didn't want it so we, we, we hit upon a solution in the end that she would try everything and then the things that she couldn't manage she'd ask for help with um, and so I had to sit back a little bit and get on with things and and leave her to it but and that's hard when it's somebody you love and you want to make it easier for them but Bless her, she's done so well. Um, and she's not quite driving yet. Um, she got to wait just another week or so, I think. But um, she got lots of friends, and so they're taking her out for coffee into garden centres and hobbling. She's up and to appointments as well. Um, and even the occupational therapist this last week has told her to calm down a bit, and that it's going to take her a year for her to get everything all as it should be. So she needs to just calm down a bit and just relax. But. Um, I can't see much of that happening. It's just not going to happen. So I don't know who we're kidding, but we'll just um, just pretend that um, it's how it should be and that she'll be fine. So we'll just get a drink. Hold on one second. So anyway, I just thought I'd update you because everybody has been really kind in asking and I really appreciate that. And I have passed on all of your good wishes. So thank you very much for all of those. 
So whilst I was over there as well, I took some time for me. And one of the things that I've been wanting to do recently is try and get my hair curly again. So um, it's a bit of an apology, but I don't often apologize for my appearance, but hopefully you'll just bear with me just this one moment or two while we just chat about it because I just want to sort of explain what's going on. So my hair's been naturally wavy for a long time. I had it permed when I was a lot younger. I was an 80s girl. So of course, everybody had their hair permed then. Um, and over the years, it's kind of been too wavy to be straight but not wavy enough to be curly um, and I've kind of tried to play around with it but it's it, it hasn't kind of worked for me a lot and I had a hairdresser when I moved over to Spain um, for these last four years who loves to um, blow dry because it's very it's quite thick my hair is and, and quite strong so she loves to blow dry because of course it gets a nice shape on it and it comes in but of course that's not how I really want to be I want to be curly I think so anyway I've um I've, en I've engaged with my inner curly girl um, and I've um, found out about a book which is the girly girl method. So there's lots of having to refresh my hair in the morning and then scrunch it and because it is so thick it can take several hours for it to dry. So um, the, the, the trouble is that <laughs> the trouble is that when I want to get recording videos my hair looks absolutely trashed because it's all wet and got the gloopy stuff in it that needs to define all the curls and try and encourage it to keep its curl pattern and what have you. Um, and and so anyway, yeah, it's just it's it's just one of those things. So so just bear with me if it looks a bit dishevelled sometimes. And I'm trying to get on a mission towards getting it right. Um, and I've got to hit on the products and just stick with it for a bit. So um, yeah, I'm following the the process in this book. And actually, this book um, retails at um, fifteen ninety five dollars. Um, I think it's from an English lady actually who does this. Who's this by Lorraine Massey? Um, with a lady called Michelle Bender um, and I actually bought it for £1.89 on eBay so that was a bit of a bargain and got it sent to my mum's um, and I had so much stuff to bring back from my mum's honestly because we've got all of the bouquet clay for Bramble um, I've got some th other things that people have very kindly ordered for me um, and had sent to my mum's um, I picked up some fabric as well which I made um, the Marcel dress that you've just seen and I've got some more fabric to make a Marcel dress for my mum um, so yeah, I actually had to buy an extra buy an extra bag and pay for um, the um, in cabin luggage, which I normally don't do. Normally, I just travel with a rucksack, and you know it's got a couple of things in, and and, and that's it. Because um, I've got some clothes at my mum's, but um, but yeah, with everything that I had to get, I had to say to him, I'm really sorry, but I need a bag to come back with. And he was really good and just said, yeah, okay, that's fine, we'll do that. It's about it's about twenty pounds, I think, to get a bag back, but um, you can fit quite a lot in, especially if you um, pack it really well. And I I don't. I don't know if you've heard about them but um, you can get things called compression um, packing boxes for when you're traveling um, and I've actually made some of my own they're just a zipped a zipped pouch basically I think I'll do a tutorial at some stage about it because they're just so easy um, and I just make them in you know forget like if I've used like um, a couple of meters of fabric and I've got half a meter left I've got enough to make a um, thing and I've got um, a whole load of zips um, just ordinary standard zips and I just use those to make them um, and they work really well because if you roll your clothes up and then pack them into these these um, these um, I call them packing pods um, I, then what happens is that when you go to the check not the check the check in or to, or through security if you have to take anything out of your bag I'm always worried that I'm going to have a pair of knickers attached to the end of um, my, my cable for something or another if I'm getting that out. And so what it means is that I can actually pack all of those things into a, a separate zipped bag and they stay in, in the bottom of my bag and I can really compress those in. And you can get so much more into your packing, you really can, and it just doesn't all kind of... Um, flop around and, and move around on you it just just keeps everything really tight and robust it does make things heavier so I did find that because I got my rucksack anyway and that was heavy and then I got I ended up buying a beach bag which I used as the bag to, to come back over with and so everything was just really really heavy so <laughs> I was glad when I saw my husband at the car park and he was able to say oh here you go have these and he was like, Woof, blood, blood my neck. you know they're they're heavy so um anyway we managed but um, it was lovely to get back home again um, it was nice to, to be there and then I think within I think a week later then Rob disappeared off for um, a few days to the UK to visit his mum who's in a care home unfortunately with dementia so he went over to visit her um, and um, I, I've been in the past but this time he was attacking attaching some work onto the trip so it wasn't relevant for me to go this time so he was able to go over
over and then he saw um, James, his son as well, and my stepson, and also saw my mum, he called and see my mum because she collects all of our posts in the UK for us, picked up any post. Um, and then he went to see his mum a couple of times before then he was he's off to do his work for a couple of days and, and then flew back. So so that gave me some time to get some um, tutorials done and some sewing done. So you'll know that I finished Bramble, um, the bear, and if you've not seen her yet, then her him, it's a unisex um, teddy bear basically. Um, if I take the dress off for you so you can see what she look, what she he looks like, what they look like without their, uh, it just, it, as they as they come if you like and this is with the boucle from um cool crafting which that i bought um and i just bought half a meter of the um biscuit color and half a meter of the cream and that was really nice now you're going to see me taking these off pay attention to how difficult it is to get these sleeves off because there's, there's something about that coming up in a minute i think it's getting them off is slightly easier than getting them on actually and using that extra strong thread, good, no, good, thank goodness, so it's not going to pull her arms off at all, their arms off, I know that. Right, we'll just fold that back. So this is, this is Bramble in all their glory. Quite long legs, I think, relative to the, the rest of the body. And I think if I make another one, I think I'll take at least an inch out of the legs without spoiling the dimensions at all. Little tail on the back there as well. Um, quite squishy because you don't because the boucle stretches so you don't want to overstuff this character and then i use buttons for eyes and then it's got a felt nose that you sew on afterwards um really very nice and tactile would be lovely for a new baby with just a bow around the neckline you don't have to make any clothes if you're short of time um and i think that the boucle was eight pounds for half a meter so in actual fact i've got a, i've got this one out of um it and i've got plenty to if I can't quite make a 100% size one, I can certainly make an Eric out of it. Um, and Eric the polar bear is Bramble's um, smaller cousin, they say in, in the talk, don't they? Bramble's the bigger bear. If I stand her on my stand next to me, you can, you can kind of see how big they are. Um, but an absolute delight to make. I think that she's um, she he is easier to make than Luna, personally, I think. The boucle was really easy to work with, but I did use my walking foot. So if you've not um, used a walking foot before, then you can have a look on the start of the video. So I'm looking at the picture and not at, not at you. Um, it, there's um, a within that video for the start of it, where I talk about all the prep, because you know at the beginning of my videos, um, I usually do the prep and the head first and then do the body and the limbs separately. And that's kind of is about the halfway point. Um, then there's a lot of talk about the boucle and making sure that you go with the dogs, which is the direction of greatest stretch. So we've talked all about that. And I also go into about um, how to fit and use a walking foot as well, which is a great um, addition to your sewing arsenal of tools if you've not used one before they used a lot in quilting but actually they're really good for stretch fabrics really good for anything like this where it's where it's thicker um, and it just grips the fabric from the top and the bottom so that when you're sewing um, it doesn't it means that your fabric won't kind of you know how sometimes your presser foot can slip off the fabric it doesn't tend to do that so it's really good for that um, also good for silks and satins and those kind of um, fabrics that tend to slide around a lot because it again with the grip it just um, holds on to it so but I go into that in more detail but yeah Bramble is um, the video that I got finished and uploaded whilst I was um, whilst Rob was away so I was able to just to get on and just do what I wanted to do so that was really nice um, but the thing that we, the big question that has been around, I mean, Ruth, um, one of my followers in my uh, Facebook group and subscribers, Ruth Bartholomew, hello to Ruth. Um, then she has been, she's been avidly watching because she wanted to know about the sleeves for Bramble. Um, and this, this dress here is the old schoolroom dress. Again, there's a tutorial on my channel about how to make this dress. Um, and it's, and how tight it was on the sleeves. And it is very tight. Um, you can get it on but it takes a bit of pushing and shoving um, and I think that any child if they were trying to get this this doll dressed this character dressed would probably get a bit fed up with it so um, another of my um, followers subscribers Tracy has asked me to do a video on how to enlarge the pattern um, at the underarms and, and, and also it was about how to, oh sorry about the outside noise, somebody's just arriving, um, I live in an apartment block and so um, right I'm on the ground floor and if there's 
cars arriving then they tend to make a noise outside the window and um, and Tracy was asking about how to how to make the changes to the patterns but also how to um, it's a bit like fitting for the characters really so I mean all of the I, you, you know I've said this before all of the skills that you learn in making the garments for the and the clothes for the teddies actually really helpful and really useful for adult dressmaking because pretty much the steps are, are, are big you're just using bigger pieces of pattern pieces and bigger bits of fabric um, but also when we're doing the fitting then how we use bramble for example as a as a as a body in order to fit and look at the, the the issues on here then some of those adjustments are going to be just the same as they are for adults obviously bigger pattern pieces but pretty much the same so I will be doing that video at some stage as well there is quite a long list of videos to come but that's great because I know that that hopefully will keep you all entertained um, and between the Luna Lapping videos for the Meadow Sweet clothes and also the videos for dressmaking um, you know and then the little bits and bobs that I do in between then you know there's a lot there's a lot of fun, fun content to come and if you're somebody who, who's only here for lunar lapping and you don't like the dressmaking at all and you'll never consider it then i hope watching seeing that i post a video about that doesn't put you off being a subscriber just just hopefully you just skip on past it and likewise if you're here for the dressmaking and you know you, you're fed up of hearing about lunar lapping um then hopefully you can just skip past those videos as well because you know there's a real split dividing in my um, subscribers and followers from the polls that I've taken um, that say that there's you're about 50 50 split as to why you're here so I'm hopeful that you'll you'll see the 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 um, transference of skills really um, between making clothes for the smaller bears and, and the tips and tricks that I use for those and then making I use the same same method in my tutorials and the same tips and tricks techniques for when we're dressmaking for adults um, obviously we have fit involved with adults but we have in in with this particular character anyway because you know this dress is really tight on there and it, it needs a bit more in the underarm and it needs a bit more along the length of the sleeve so so I will be working on that at some stage so please bear with me Tracy it will be coming and Ruth it will be coming so just just bear with me um I've got um, some other plans as well. Um, I'm going to be doing Christmas in July again this year. Last year, um, if you have looked at my channel, then I did a, I did, I made um, a quilted um, advent calendar from a panel that had little pockets in it. And then I made little wooden ornaments to, to go into the pockets so that it was a reusable advent calendar. Um, and also so it got away from chocolate all the time as well so you know that was that was a really popular one and I like the idea for the creative industry of us starting in July um, to get a, a handle on our handmade goods for what we want to make for our presents for people for for Christmas um, and so yeah that's got, got a new project coming up very um, kindly sponsored by somebody um, and that will go live at midnight on the 1st of July um, I've got part the I've got one, three parts of it videoed already and they're they're ready and just scheduled to come on. So the first one will come on the 1st of July and then I think I've got the next one scheduled for the 7th of July. Um, so that will just get people to get a chance to get their bits together before then they want to jump in and start. And I'm hoping to get some more recorded as we go through this month as well. Oh, we're nearly at July, aren't we? But it's just giving me a bit of a head start to try and move things through. Um, and I think that Rob being away as well has given me a head start because there's been a couple of videos that I'd wanted to do on my cashmere Rose Claire dress. I did the twirl and review video for that one. And I also did the twirl and review video, was it for this one? For this by, yes, but this one by hand, um, Anna London, by hand London, Anna dress that I made as well. And I've been wearing it today. So that's nice and it's lovely linen. Um, so I enjoyed doing those twirl and review videos. And, and you know what, you, you feel a bit daft doing them. Um, and it's not because you want to show off it's not because you wanted to try and um pretend that you're a model although you know i try and do my best poses and i do put a little bit of lipstick on just just to um look the, look the part hopefully um but i think that it, it's really useful to see how the fabric moves on real bodies and then how the garments actually fit as well because afterwards then if you i try not to put the annoying music on it um but we try and have a bit of a twirl for a couple of minutes um so you can see how it fits how it moves how i fitted it to my body but then we i then bring you back inside here now that'll be the format as we go through and i put the um dresses on my um, little um, mannequin here 
um, well it's not a little one but on my mannequin um, and then we talked through the changes that I made and, and, and how the pattern fits and so for example with the Rose Claire it's normally got a bound edge for the cross that's a crossover dress with a um, with big sleeves on it either um, short sleeves or, or three-quarter length sleeves lovely autumn dress I really love that or spring and autumn dress really love that for, for those seasons but I didn't like the way that that was bias bound on the edge. So in the end, um, I've done a faced lining for that, as I as I have done with this one as well, which we can you've probably seen the video for these anyway. So I can use a darker fabric on the inside, and then if there is any gaping, you're not going to see that. Um, and I think that it works really well to to talk through that with you. So that, so that's on the twirl and review video, just talking about those types of linings. And then I altered the pattern slightly to put a single narrow frill on the bottom of the Rose Claire rather than having the three tiered or just the plain um, a line skirt, which I think was a nice addition. And it just gives a different it just it just because patterns are expensive, aren't they? So if we can get another look out of the pattern without it being identical to one we've already made, even though the fabric makes the world a difference. And, and again, um, you know, if you make some for spring, you make some for summer and some for winter, again, you're spreading that dress out and you're getting far more hits on that pattern. Um, then I think that it's nice to see how those move. But then there are other videos on my channel that talk about the faced lining and how you can draft your own facings because the Rose Claire doesn't have any facings and it didn't have any lining to it um, so I've, I've kind of made that bit up but it's only following tried and tested techniques that have been around for years anyway I've just brought them to you in in the way that I do my tutorials and I think that people seem to like those so yeah that's so that so I tried to, so I think with every new dress I make I'm going to do a twirl and review video because generally they're either the fabrics are different or there's something with the pattern that is different or I've chosen a different size because I don't know about you but my 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 size and shape changes um throughout the year so sometimes I need some dresses in perhaps a little bit bigger on the hips and a bit smaller on the bust and and what have you so I make those changes and we talk about those as we're doing it so talking 10 to the dozen as always but I hope you enjoyed those and just just smile with me at, at my ineptitude at modeling um because it, the reason you know you're looking is just to have a look and just see and then if I can inspire somebody I know I inspired Georgina to have a go at doing her Rivermont dress um and you know I know she's working on that while we while we speak so that'll hopefully um be seen at some stage but yeah if I can you know, I did the Marcel dress recently, which was the um, tiered um, sundress with the straps. Uh, and hopefully, I, well, not hopefully, I will be doing a sew along with that one. But but I know that I posted the video, the 12 video for that on, or, or the um, presence of the 12 video on the Curvy Sewing Collective, uh, which is a Facebook group that I follow. And quite a few people have said that they enjoyed looking at the video and seeing how it all how the dress moves and how it fitted on a on a real person as well um you know when it's different to just seeing a photograph isn't it so that's the reason for those so they're just a bit of fun just bear with me with those but hopefully there's there's some value in them as well and, and you enjoy those and then um when i make a new dress um either for the first time or for the second time whatever i will record a sew along will I'm promising aren't I I'm hoping to record a sew along video for each um, not each iteration but just for the first time that I make it and then we'll, we, because as you know I like to concentrate on the finish I want the dresses to look as if they've possibly been bought rather than just been handmade or homemade handmade homemade it's that old dilemma isn't it um, or made by me and so that's I think that's really important um, and I was talking to to somebody the other day and, 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 and trying to because there's so much frustration around sewing for ourselves when we're dressmaking. And, you know, I, try, I, I kind of try to describe it like this. And so it's, it's a little bit of a long description, but bear with me. I think you'll see the value in it when we get to the end. And that is that we we choose a dressmaking pattern having having never tried that dress on before. So we might have tried on a dress similar to that in terms of the shape or the style, but we've never tried that actual dress on. So if you think about when you go to a shop, you can just go to the, the rack, pick up that dress or three or four different dresses of all different styles, go and try them on different um, sizes as well, and then choose the one that suits you best. And that's the one that you'll pay for and take home. But when you choose a dressmaking pattern, then you have to choose your pattern and you have to 
you're kind of guessing whether or not it's going to suit you. Um, you know, how whether the shoulder's going to fit right, whether it's going to cover up your arms if that's what you want it to do, how it fits around the waist, whether you can get it to, to, to alter to um, the pattern altered to how you want it to be. So we're choosing a pattern without having tried it on. Next, we're then, try, we're then having to choose a fabric that suits that pattern but not only in terms of the, whether it's a, a um, linen or a viscose or a silk or a satin or a ponte or a whatever, we've then got to choose a colour that suits us um, and that we like. We've then got to choose a fabric design, um, so the pattern on the fabric, in colours and design that, that suits not only us and our body shape and our dimensions, but also suit the dimensions of the pattern. So whether it's got a floaty skirt and you want a big pattern or whether you want a smaller ditzy print. So like with this dress, I chose this linen, loved it, absolutely loved it in the shop, thought that looked fabulous. But then I tried it on and I needed to put the split in it in the skirt because it's got a split up uh, on one side um, in order for it not to look too mumsy. So the, the smaller ditzy floral, actually whilst I thought it was going to look great, just lost something when it was all over and I hadn't put the slit in so I then later went and put the slit in and and I think that just added something different to it that then sort of elevated it a little bit so that's the second thing so we've got huge pattern you never tried before you then got to get your fabric that you've never sort of seen yourself in or put, put on you before you've then got to try and get that pattern fitted so that it fits in all the right places enough that you're happy to be seen out in it um, you know I've had dresses before I mean I did one last year where I made it out of double gauze mustard double gauze and oh my goodness it was it was hideous it wasn't even a dress that I wanted to save and just use for cleaning up because if I have any fails I tend to just say well it's just a house dress I'll wear it around the house and it doesn't matter if any you know nobody needs to see me in it but if I'm cleaning or I'm just sewing then I'll, I'll wear my disasters then because it doesn't matter so much rather than waste the fabric but this one I didn't even save for that it it got ousted um so we've got to then sort of get the fit right with that one um, before then we can then get it finished as well. So we want a finish that looks nice um, and that we're proud of and that we'll actually wear out. So when you're learning to sew and it doesn't matter whether it's the characters or whether it's for yourself, you've got to you've got to tick all of those boxes in order to feel you've climbed to the top of the mountain. And what I'm going to say to you is that I think that we should celebrate the small wins. I think if we choose a pattern that suits our frame, that's a tick in a box. If we, another time, choose a, a fabric that's the right colours and the right um, size, uh, not, yeah, size of print for the pattern, that's another tick. But we might not have chosen the pattern that suits our frame properly or got it finished quite right. So between those four elements of the pattern, the fabric, the fit and the finish, I think we should reward ourselves if we get a tick in any one of those boxes with the view to then learning more over time so that we get more ticks in boxes as time goes on. So, so don't give yourself a hard time if you don't quite get it the first time because there's just so much to this. You know, people have in companies have whole design departments and putting fabrics together and then they've got professional machinists who, who sew put zips in all day every day or sew buttons on all day every day, whereas we have to be master of every everything, don't we? So yeah, I'm just trying to say, just try and be a bit kind to yourself when you're starting on your sewing and your dressmaking journey because that will come. You know, if you watch the YouTube videos, you listen to people who have, have tried and tested already, then hopefully we can help you, you know, the sewing community can help you troubleshoot and um, improve your sewing. Um, you know, I don't get it right all the time. I still watch YouTube videos. I'm, you know, I'm still watching Tom Cat Stitchery. Um, who did I watch the other day? JD Lynn, I think I watched as well the other day, who gave me a fabulous tip about using a stretchy, using rather than using a woven interfacing use a stretch interfacing on floaty fabrics because it's got far more fluidity so i'm going to be bringing that to my next makes because that, there's some fabrics down to show you in a minute um so there's lots of places where we just pick up tips and tricks instagram whatever but together it pulls together to make this body of knowledge that we can then apply to all of our projects and over time we improve and we get more satisfied and then delighted and then downright proud of the things that we make and and that's where we want to get to eventually but i'm just going to say just just be kind to yourself that you actually 
you get some time to get there because there's a lot to cover all in one go. So um, I've got some fabrics to show you because we've been to Malaga today shopping. Rob wanted to um, renew his basketball um, season ticket, which is great because that means I get some sewing time. Um, don't start until September though, but it'll go through the winter, so that's good. So I'm happy with that. And so we took him to get his um, his season ticket for there. And there's a fabric shop in Malaga. Not, where did I put the bag for that? Oh, it's down the bottom. Um, called Ribes e Casals, and I'll pop a little note up there as to how that that sort of spelt and looked. If ever you want to go and have a little look yourself, and it's in the centre of Malaga, and it's a beautiful building. It's a really big store. I, I didn't take any pictures inside until afterwards and it closed for siesta at two and of course by then we'd we'd kind of were on our way back again um but it's the window displays and I, I capture some pictures but they don't do it justice at all because the reflection of the sun on the windows and what have you but but they are beautiful the way they dress their mannequins are just stunning um and if I could drape like that you you just yeah you'd, you'd be in heaven wouldn't you um, so we popped in there to have a look for some fabrics and um, I knew I'd got my latest cashmere patterns that I want to make. I want to make the Hampton, um, Hamden, I want to make the Holy Oak, um, I want to make a Lennox at some stage um, and then there was another one and I'm making two Hamptons probably two Hamptons I think. So there's a, there's a few um, there, and three of those um, patterns um, the Hollyoak, the Hampton, the Lennox are all new to me patterns so I'll be doing sew alongs with those um, and probably there's a Marcel as well in there the um, long floaty tear dress that I've got so I might make that or I'll do another Hollyoak depending on how the first one turns out um, but I thought that what I'd do is something like the Hollyoak where that's a um, pattern that is widely available you don't need to be a club member in order to have that pattern I'm going to do a beginner's breakdown video on that one so we're going to talk about the pattern we're going to talk about the fabric we're going to talk about how you lay your fabric out onto your fabric for cutting out how you lay your fabric out how you lay your pattern out onto your fabric for cutting out and then take you through all of those steps and I'm going to try and do them in smaller standalone videos so that if you just need to come back to one of those you can do and I don't have to wait so long before uploading them all as well this is the theory but I thought it would be interesting because um, I know some people when they're stitching or when they're doing other projects do sometimes put my videos on in order for me to keep them company hello to Anne I know that you do um, and so what I'm hoping is that we can we can I can um, demystify some of it for you but do it in shorter chunks so that it does make it more interesting um, because I think there's sometimes there's quite a lot where people will will say yes we're going to make this pattern and then they'll automatically show you this pattern then um, traced and cut out but they've not actually talked to you about grain lines they've not talked to you about how to make sure your your fabrics um, pattern pieces are straight on your fabric and those types of things and we cover some of that in the lunar lapping but there's more that we can do with that um, there's gonna be noise outside hold on one second okay sorry about that just a car moving and, and going out um so yeah so there's the, so that's going to be coming and then on the patterns that are the club patterns so that's the Holly o not Holly o the Hampton um and there was one more I thought I wanted to make might just be the Hampton that's the um that's the club pattern then which is great for you guys because you can see what I'm what I'm making um and that's cashmere pattern again um then I'm going to um just do a bit more of an abbreviated version because I'm assuming that if you've joined the club you've already got an interest in sewing and you already know how to sew um, and so if we can do that, then that might speed things up. And I don't want to keep labouring points for people, but it's very difficult to know where people are jumping in and where they're jumping off and, and what their experience is already. So um, that's um, something that we're, that we're going to be doing. Um, so that's, that's coming. Um, so let's just talk about fabrics. For, for, I've got two shirts to make for Rob as well. So I've got some um, linen that I bought here from Pound Fabrics. It wasn't a pound, um, but that's a very nice linen fabric. So I'm going to make him a shirt out of that. There's quite a lot there, so I might be able to get a, a blouse for me out of it as well, or a, or a skirt or something out of that. But that's a really nice, um, like a cornflower blue, um, hopefully the light's picking it up properly, cornflower blue and white linen, which will look really nice. Um, and then I'm, I'm going to also, so I think that's going to be just a casual um, Revere collared um, kind of not really a collar but a, a collared shirt button front um, and then I'll do it with the, the tabs on the sleeves that can be rolled up but also with cuffs so we can wear it at different times of the year I think he's got to finalize the plans and then I picked up this other fabric which 
it's difficult to know whether it's actually dressmaking fabric or not and sometimes it you know you don't know whether it is it's a bit cheesecloth it's got a little bit of, a bit of transparency to it um but it's got a very fine beige stripe in it i'm just trying to lean forward to show you it's got a very fine little beige stripe in it um so that should be quite a nice fabric for a shirt for him as well and he's wanting a granddad style in that one with the um with the little um granddad kind of um just the turn up of the collar not the actual collar itself buttons down the front um, and then the, the turn up on the sleeves as well. So those are two that I do need to make for him. I think he'll only get one before I start to make my clothes for me, but um, he, he's been waiting long enough for these, so it won't matter. And it, it's, not, it's not as if he hasn't got any um, shirts anyway. Oh, sorry, just more news outside. Hold on one second. Yeah, it's hard to know whether to open the window or to leave it closed. And it gets so warm in here if I close the window that um, I have got it open at the moment, but I might live to, re I might be, might be regretting that decision. So that's two for him. So that those were those ones I bought last year. So I've not, there aren't new ones. But today from Rebels e Casals, these are the ones that I bought. Very graciously dropping down, aren't I? So this is um, a multicoloured viscose that I bought. And that's got a really lovely bright colours to it and that should look quite nice lots of these are my colours anyway um, i'm a spring in um colour colour definition um types um and that's going to look really nice it's a nice weight of um viscose as well it's got some body to it which is nice so that's going to be nice and swooshy on a skirt and i think this is either going to be another marcel um which is the tiered dress or it's going to be a, um a second holly oak um depending on how the first and i might make use this one first because this is perhaps my least favourite of the ones that I bought. Um, but this one was 5.95 euros um, a metre, which is probably about five pounds a metre, isn't it, in the UK? Um, but yeah, really nice and, and pretty colours there and quite a nice bold print. So that's the first one I bought. I bought four metres of that one. Um, so how much, I've got my receipt here because I thought it was interesting as well. So although we've paid for the pattern already um, and I've now got two Marcel's made this um and if I made another one out of that that would be a third Marcel so you start to divide the pattern by the number of times you've made from it I think and then that helps so this one was actually um 5.95 a meter bought four meters so that's 23 euros 80 I spent on that so for 24 euros I'll have a, another summer dress which will be good and viscose is a natural fiber so that's nice and breathable as well so that's that one so I've overlocked the edges so when I get my fabrics um, I would say before they come in my sewing room but we're in my sewing room um, but I overlock the edges and I have so very tastefully done in a black um, thread there and then I pop them in the washing machine um, and then pop them in my ironing pile and they get ironed when I do the ironing so that anything that kind of comes into my sewing room to be put away I know has already been um, washed and, and pressed and it's ready to be cut out because you do get shrinkage especially with viscose as well so if we and linen and so if we want those shrinkages to be out of the way then we need to wash those and iron those and the best way to think have I done it or not is overlock the edges because then you know you've done something to it but then get it washed and then um, ironed as soon as you can do um, and then that's a good one to do the next one I bought was um, this one actually that my husband spotted another lady looking at and this is another viscose but this is almost like a satin it feels like a silky satin kind of linen and it's got this lovely big green um, and cream they're just a slightly off-white um, flowers on them um, and then that pale blue which hopefully you think will look nice on me um, and I'm thinking this could be a holly oak as well because that's a maxi dress um, and I'm thinking that would look nice in that one. I'll pop a picture up of the holly oak as well when I get a chance. Um, so yeah, so this one also was 5.95 a meter. So this one was 23.80 as well. So again, for 25 euros, I'm going to have that's a, that's another summer dress. And I love my dresses. I must admit, I don't I don't wear separates very often at all. I'd much rather put a dress on. So I've got four meters of that one too. But you never know. There might be enough to make something else out of it. Um, as, as we go through we'll have a look and see so we'll find out um, then this one my husband actually spotted but I really love the colours on this one so this is a viscose too so look at that one that's really really pretty um, and got these lovely um, almost water dark watercolour flowers on it um, again lots of lovely colours that I think will hopefully um, suit me hopefully you think that too I thought so um, and he really liked it too which which is always a plus isn't it he doesn't always like everything I make um, and this one was 12.95 um, um, a meter and I bought just two and a half meters of this one because I'm going to make a Hampton dress out Hampton dress out of this one by Cashmerette 
um, and that's got a scooped neck, short sleeves, um, a semi-fitted um, top and then a straight skirt to it and then big patch pockets on the front but I think that could look really quite nice so that's what I'm going to make in that one um, so that one was in total was 30 nearly 33 euros but again really good value for that because I needed so much less so I was able to go a bit more expensive on the fabric and then um, this final one is this turquoise blue, which is a really striking colour. And this is actually a Tencel. Now, I've not worked with a Tencel before. Um, I've bought it a little bit on a whim because I liked the feel of it. It's got a little bit of structure to it and a little bit of kind of... Um, not not rigidity because it's not rigid because you can see it's quite floaty but it's got it's got some substance to it um and i just uh, but also it's got that drape and that floatiness as you can see as i just wafted and i, I bought two and a half meters of this one as well and this one was 13 25 a meter so i'll be doing some research into that and having a look at that one but i think this one as well will make a hampton dress or it'll make a lennox um, now Lennox was, the Lennox dress by Cashmerette has got some more top stitching on it and I and with, because this is a plain fabric I did think that with a bit of um, maybe contrast or coordinating top stitching on it that could look quite nice just to pull out those features um, so you know obviously don't don't hold me to this but that's what I'm thinking at the moment and I'm hoping that it's um, a natural ish fiber um, that I'll be able to then use in the summer as well or, or if not then it'll be spring, a, 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 a spring come you know late summer kind of dress when you just need something a little bit cooler on but lovely bright turquoise color which hopefully will you'll think will look nice too so that's all of those that i've bought i know it seems like i spent a lot of money um i spent 118 euros in total but i'm gonna get four dresses out of that at least um and if not a little bit of extra with some of the other fabrics if i can make a little top or something out of them as well um, and I'd spend far more than that if I was actually going to shop um, to, to buy the, the clothes. Um, so, yeah, I just thought that it just makes it just um, it makes it affordable. And I I probably go fabric shopping once a quarter, once every four to five months. So, again, I don't think I'm going out all the time and buying lots and lots because, I mean, these two that I've not sewn with yet, I, I bought last year. Um, so again, you know, I'm, I'm not being overly extravagant, don't worry, um, it's, just, it's just the way that it is. But yeah, I just thought it was um, just nice to be able to see the price, I'm looking at the receipt, um, the price is on here and see what you can get because they're good, pretty good quality. But I think I've been really careful, or I'm trying to be really careful to only buy natural fibres. So that's your, your, your cotton, your viscose, your um, silks if you can afford it um well not afford it but if, if you're you know you want to to to, to buy those i'm going to say they're special occasions but they're not are they we can you know we can treat ourselves at any time um and the linens and the walls so i'm trying to choose more natural fibers for my wardrobe because you know i'm finding that i'm making the clothes and they're staying in my wardrobe for quite a long time so you know i do want to actually wear those um so it's worth sort of getting something nice but when i can pick up good fabrics at a good price then I like to do that so this will now sort me through until well until we get into the winter season really and that'll, that will do for there. Um, the other thing that I want to say is and, and you, you may have noticed that we're, we're in the sewing room after Rob has finished building my units there's a bit of a sneaky glimpse here of of the unit that he's built me for my um, cover stitch and overlocker um, and we've, we've just put in the final touches to it before I can do a bit of it I'm going to do a bit of a reveal video um, and just show you because I think that some of the solutions hopefully you'll agree um, are pretty good because I think this is a three by three room, but it's got a fitted wardrobe over to um, my left here, um, which takes a big chunk out of the room. And before, on the video before, it was quite cluttered and quite busy. And so I've done a little bit of streamlining, a little bit of organization. I'm not going too crazy, but I've, I've, I've sort of put some order into the room and some organization. And, and with some careful thinking, we've actually come up with some really good solutions that I think if you've got a small sewing space might really help you. So I'm going to do a video on that and um, share that out. And I think looking at people's sewing spaces are, are, is quite good. And I know you've already seen it looking a mess and, and how it was before, but this is the new improved version. And I'll, I'll try not to make it nearly an hour long as it was last time as well. My husband said to me the day, he said, did, did you really put an hour long video, a, a tour of your sewing room? I'm like, well, yeah, but there's a lot in it and he's like well I suppose so but yeah he was surprised I think he thought quick five minutes and it'd be done well 
I'll try and make it quicker than that anyway, but you know, I like to waffle a bit as well. Um, so that's fine. So I have got my stitching wall behind the, the back of me here. This one isn't stitching. This is a, um, a paint by numbers that I did during lockdown. Um, but the others are um, cross stitches that, and embroideries that I've done. And then I've still got one that's just going to go into this space just here. And that's this one. So I've got it just on this, um, it's been ironed at the moment. So I've got this one here. And the reason why there's a bit of a blank space here is to put your initials um, and the year, supposedly. Um, and I'm really pleased with it. It's come out really nicely. Got some lovely colours in there with those greys and those like sagey green, these colours and then all the pinks. Um, and that's going to be framed. I've been and chosen the frame and that's um, being made for me. And then it's going to go just up here. Um, and I do save up to get my um, pieces framed because I think once it is framed, it's even going to be in that frame for the rest of its life and probably for the rest of my life before it goes off to a, a charity shop at, you know, if I pop my clogs. Um, so I thought, well, it's nice to have it looking looking nice. I've chosen a white frame and it's got a little silver inset into it. And then I've got um, a mount, which is about the similar colour to this. So it looks really quite nice. Um, well, I think so anyway. Hopefully you'll agree. So that one's going to go in there. So if you think there's a bit of a gap there, that's why that's that one's going to go in there um, and I've just got to get that get that collected so another week or so I get that collected so I'll probably get this collected first so I can put that up uh, before we then um, do the video and I've used command strips you know those velcro plastic velcro um, strips that you can use so that in theory I can as time goes on and I need to move them round, then I can move them round without spoiling the wall or, or anything and pop this down. So I'm just holding that there for the moment until um, the, um, I've got a thread in it, until the um, frame arrives and then I'm going to mount it myself. But the other idea I had is I'm actually going to take a photograph of it um, and when it's mounted but not in the frame because I think that would make a really nice new home card. Um, so I'm going to get some little cards made, I think. Um, and pop those in. I was just worried about this because it looks as if I've sewn it too close to the top look because it's quite close to the top but because it's supposed to have something there so if I'd have thought about it before I could have just moved that whole section down that heart in the middle there in the wording um, and I keep wondering whether to put something in there or just to leave it as it is so let me know your thoughts should I should I try and put a bit more of a design in this area um, and copy some of the elements for, that are already in it just to try and um, bring that in or shall I just leave it as it is and not mess with it because um, sometimes knowing when to leave something is as important as knowing when to actually keep keep working with something um, and that's sometimes where where I don't always have that in mind so take a breath Claire it's um yeah this one's going to be long as well isn't it and I didn't think I got much to tell you but um there's been lots so yeah look out for Christmas in July that's really quite exciting that one is um as I say, I'm getting on, on with doing that. We've still got the kits to do. I've still got the kilt. I've still got the thespian shirt to do for Hamish. I've still got all of Otterline's three garments to make. Um, I've still got Hugh the Hound to make um, for, for that as well before we, we get on to anything else. So there's a lot, there's a lot to, and the fitting video for Bramble as well. So there's a lot to come. Um, so I hope you'll stick around with me. I just want to say thank you very much for your kindness and your support. Thank you for being here. Thank you for all the lovely, lovely kind words that you send to me. Um, I'm really thrilled that you get value out of the videos. I, I love to make them um, and I really enjoy myself and I hope that comes through in, in the videos. But, you know, I, I appreciate you taking the time to watch them. I hope you've enjoyed them um, and I hope you'll keep coming back for more and more and together we'll, we'll build our sewing skills together it's all a journey that we're all on um, and together we'll start to make some some amazing things together and, and I'll hopefully tempt you to try dressmaking if you haven't done dressmaking yet or I'll tempt you to try maybe doing a lapping or making a cuddly toy at some stage or clothes for a toy um, at some stage you never know but or maybe a bit of cross stitch or a bit of quilting um, there's lots to be done isn't there so I'm going to leave it for there for now because you're probably fed up of listening to me um, and I'm just going to Tootle off now. Um, I think tea's cut beckoning. We need to get some dinner made. Um, and I think we're just going to have a relaxing evening now after our trip to Malaga um, that we enjoyed earlier on. So 
yeah I'll probably put some pictures through with this as, as I've been chatting um, so hopefully I've covered everything that I've talked about if there's anything I haven't covered then just drop me a line below and I'll um, I'll fill you in on all the details and if you're not a member of my Facebook group and you fancy joining that then we've got a supportive and inclusive group there for anybody who loves stitching um, we don't post all the time every day it's not one of these where you get inundated with 20 posts every single day but it's just there just for if and when we need it and if anybody needs um, any help or support then you can message me through there and obviously I can answer and we can attach photos and we can have that discussion between ourselves and other members as well which is the collaborative part and the community part of sewing so you're welcome to pop along there um, if you look in the header on the channel there's a there's a link to it there or if you just look for um, sewing by Claire sewing support group um, then that on Facebook then you'll be able to find me as well hopefully I'll pop up there and you do need to answer the membership questions I don't let people in who haven't answered the membership questions I'll decline with feedback as they call it so I will decline and say you've not mentioned answered the membership questions but as soon as you do I'll be happy to let you in um, just because I use that as a filtering process just to make sure the people who are actually coming in are sewists and aren't just wanting to take advantage of service or, or, or the group and having people there. I think we're about 100 members strong at the moment at June, June 2023 we are, aren't we? And we're about 100 members, so, but yeah, lovely. So I enjoy, I enjoy talking to people and it's so nice to be able to see the faces and see the people behind who are leaving comments and what have you. So I really appreciate that too. Right, shush Claire. Everybody wants to get on with their day. So have a great day. I hope you're enjoying the weekend. We're on a Saturday here. Um, so I hope you have a lovely Sunday or weekend or whatever day of the week it is that you're watching. I hope all's good with you. If it's not, I hope you're being kind to yourself and taking some time for you um, and just doing what you need to do. Um, I hope you're enjoying your stitching and I hope I continue to, to give you some thoughts and tips and tricks that you can use in your own. So have a great day, everybody. Thank you for being here. Take care. Bye.